This is Dr. Chinello Animalo, Infectious Disease Specialist and Professor of Medicine, Division of Infectious Diseases. So again, I had just mentioned excessive prescription of antibiotics has been identified as the major etiology of this uh, emergence of this organism. So I live in Tennessee, I live in Memphis, Tennessee in the US, and we rank number five in the entire nation for the injudicious use of antibiotics um, prescription. In Nigeria and other parts of the world, other contributing factors would include healthcare, environmental factors such as lack of regulatory policies and you know the role of antimicrobial you know stewardship programs and infection prevention and control and then lack of or availability of guidelines um, to assist physicians and other prescribers and, and patient pressure. I talk about patient pressure because, you know, as it is here in the U.S., I'm sure that's how it is also in Nigeria where, um, you know, parents bring in their kids or, you know, somebody comes to see you. And if you don't give them prescription for medication, especially antibiotics, they kind of feel that you have done absolutely nothing for them. So everybody feels better when they walk away with prescription for some antibiotics. And then also the limited knowledge about antibiotics as well as incorrect dosing by physicians as well as mid-levels and pharmacies. This is important because when we use a subminimal dose to treat certain types of infection, it would promptly result in resistance, development of resistance. So where does this prescribing trends lead us? Let's look at this. Creation of slippery monsters, we call them little monsters and you know, in the world, they are known as superbugs or multidrug resistant organisms. So what is superbugs? Again, it refers to, you know, microbes that have enhanced morbidity and mortality due to multiple mutations and gives them high level resistance to antibiotics. And we've seen this occur in literally every single class of antibiotics that exist um, at this time. So the most dangerous of these organisms um, have been found in a healthcare setting and is believed to be mainly from person to person contact. And um, they've been, you know, conflicting studies about the role of healthcare workers in the transmission of these organisms. This is literally an entire lecture on its own, but um, so I'm gonna, you know, leave it there. But um, in terms of healthcare associated infections, you know, with you know, MRSA, VRE, and these are organisms that you see mostly in the hospital setting. Of course, MRSA is also in the community, but I'm talking about the hospital or nosocomial MRSA. And there's been studies that show that we as healthcare workers, including doctors, nurses, physical therapists, we tend to take this from one person, from one room to the other. All right, so let's look at the worst offenders in the acute care setting. Methicillin resistant staph aureus, MRSA. I'm sure for most clinicians here, this would be literally one of our worst nightmares. Um, you know, C. diff, Clostridium difficile infection, vancomycin resistant enterococcus, that's a VRE, as well as carbapenem resistant enterobacteriasis, which is known as the CRE. And the most notorious mode of care of spread will be the healthcare workers. And uh, you also have, you know, like the visa, the vancomycin intermediate staph aureus, as well as the vancomycin resistant staph aureus. And um, these are something that is, you know, is beginning to be literally one of our worst nightmares, again, in the clinical setting, when you have patients that come in with this and you have very minimal options in terms of um, selection or choice of antibiotics. And he, this here is a list of other anti, um, organisms that's listed by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in America, that um, you know are organisms that we need to be wary of, especially in the healthcare settings. Um, we have the ESBL producing um, enterobacteriaceae. We talked about the VRE. Of course, you cannot talk about this and not mention the multi-drug resistant pseudomonas or, you know, the carbapenem resistant Acinetobacter bomani, as well as other um, organisms here. So there have been um, instances of outbreaks of these organisms in some healthcare facilities, as well as some communities. And um, you've also had some documented outbreaks of this infection. Um, through infected medical instruments. And this has brought, you know, led to the question about the effectiveness 
or they currently use disinfecting and cleaning techniques in the healthcare setting. So uh, we are we are all aware of the you know outbreak of gabapentinase resistant Enterobacteriaceae that CRE following exposures to uh, duodenoscopes here in the United States. For lack of time, um, I would not delve into that. So what is causing this resistance? Like we've talked about again, the overuse of antibiotics. So according to the CDC, more than 50% of antimicrobials, when we talk about antimicrobials, we're talking about antibiotics, um, um, antivirals, as well as antifungal medications that are prescribed in the United States were deemed unnecessary, especially the outpatient and inpatient setting. They, um, antimicrobials are basically the only medications where they use in one patient can compromise the efficacy in other patients. I tried to use this example of the use of metropolol in Mr. Smith and Mrs. Smith versus the use of meropenem, which is you know, one of our carbapenem antibiotics, right? So Mr. Smith was admitted in the hospital you know, with an intra-abdominal infection and had this, um, um, you know, had to be in the hospital for several weeks and, you know, ended up uh, with a CRE infection, carbapenem resistant enterobacter um, infection. And fast forward to six months later, Mrs. Smith was admitted in the hospital for um, cholecystectomy. And, um, you know, this was complicated by some um, infection also. And then they found out that um, when they culture the they abscess, you know, the, the abscess, it was also going in CRE. This Mrs. Smith has never been in the, um, in the hospital or admitted. So how did she get this um, infection? And that's usually true uh, transmission, um, horizontal transfer of genes or classmates, probably from her husband. So Dr. Spellberg is um, a well-known ID doctor in ASP, that's antimicrobial stewardship programs. And what he did here was to kind of look at, see, compare different um, disease entities. If you look on the left side, you're going to see CAP, that's uh, community acquired pneumonia. And what he did was to look at their uh, randomized clinic, uh, clinical trials that should be on your right side. And where studies that had used a shorter duration of antibiotics versus longer duration of antibiotics to see what the outcome was. And basically what um, was, it showed that use or shorter duration of antibiotics was as good as longer duration. So if we are able to treat community acquired pneumonia with antibiotics for three to five days, why give five to 14 days and you know, causing resistance? So another thing, um, I'm sorry, another thing we are seeing here would be longer duration, of course, um, of antibiotics leading to more resistance. And what you see here would be, I don't know if you guys can see this graph very well, but basically what this is showing is um, correlation between the duration of use of antibiotics and then the emergence of resistance um, to fluoroquinolones as well as gabapenems um, on the right side. So. I don't know if uh, if you all are able to see this slide. So let's look at the worst resistance is caused by um, the class of antibiotics called the carbapenems, as well as the fluoroquinolones. We're talking about cirrofloxacin and levofloxacin as being the worst um, in this category. Let's look at the worst offenders for resistance here. Again, you're looking at um, in terms of development of vancomycin resistant enterococcus, methicillin resistant staph aureus, extended spectrum beta lactamase or, or ESBL organisms, as well as the CREs, the carbapenem resistant um, enterobacteriaceae. And so, what are the worst offenders? I'm talking about the classes of antibiotics. And what you're going to see here would be uh, second and third generation cephalosporins, uh, fluoroquinolones, as well as the carbapenem. So, these are you know, for those in clinical practice, um, these are very common antibiotics that we literally use every single day. And um, for me, in, um, let's say if I have 20 patients I'm rounding on today, um, I know that more than half of my patients are going to be receiving one or two of these classes of um, antibiotics. So longer duration also leads to higher risk of C. diff infection. And what this study showed basically was that the longer uh, we leave patients on antibiotics, um, less than four days duration, four to seven days, and uh, eight to 18 days, and more than 18 days 
um, duration. Um, this was associated with much higher risk of development of C. diff infection. And so let's look at this again, the worst offenders for C. diff. Uh, this was a systematic review back in 2021. What it did was to look at the, um, you know, again, different classes of antibiotics. Um, and you can see here that the cabapenems, the third generation cephalosporins, four generations, which would be cefepidim uh, and ceftazidine, and of course, one of my favorite antibiotics in this whole world, the fluoroquinolones, uh, also considers that worse offenders for C. diff infection. So you can see they kind of look very familiar, all right? And so cabapenems and fluoroquinolones, here they go again. So worst offenders for resistance, we've talked about the worst offenders for C. diff infection. And again, they are also considered the worst offenders for resistance. So same antibiotics, more resistance and C. diff infection. And so good news, avoid these antibiotics and reduce your risk of C. diff infection and, you know, development of, you know, MDRs in your, in your patients versus, you know, use this at your risk. So other consequences of antibiotic use would be the impact on the microbiome. Um, this is a topic that takes, uh, you know, at least another one hour. So I just kind of wanted to, you know, mention this. I'm not going to elaborate on this, but uh, for every practicing um, clinician here in the room, we are all aware of the diversity of gut microbes, um, you know, is decreased with C. diff infection as well as patients that have recurrent C. diff infections. So let's look at the prescribing trends in Nigeria. Um, There's so many studies that um, I was able to, you know, pull up. And something that stood out to me also would be that the same classes of antibiotics that we kind of worry about here in the U.S. is also, um, you know, an issue in Nigeria. The commonest would be, you know, the, the use of fluoroquinolones. Um, back home. And then, you know, the, the penicillins and, you know, the septoraxins also is something that is an issue back in Nigeria. So what can we do to stop this? Um, I'm going to stop here because uh, we have um, other colleagues who will be picking up, you know, and talk about the implications of this in the clinical setting. But what I wanted to do was to kind of lay the foundation of the backgrounds, you know, to our viewers so people are kind of able to understand where we started and where we are right now. And this is a major, major emergency because when you have patients that you do not have antibiotics to use, the outcome is going to be poor. The chances are you will lose that patient. So thank you for your time. I'm open to any questions or comments.